Hi and welcome to the Blazor component tutorial where we're going to talk about the fundamentals of Blazor components what exactly they are why we need them and how we create and use them in our applications I'm Ganesh and if you're new to this channel make sure to hit that subscribe button for more content like this Blazor is a .NET web UI framework that provides a component based programming model for building web UIs now what are components Components are the fundamental building blocks of a Blazor application. So we create a Blazor application using these reusable elements of web UI called components. A component can be a page or a part of a page such as a data entry form or even a dialog. Components are informally called Blazor components and more formally called Razor components but they all mean the same thing. A component in Blazor consists of HTML markup for its user interface content, CSS for styling or presenting the UI content, and C Sharp for its UI logic. If we compare Blazor with other component based frameworks like Angular, components in Angular are made up of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, or rather a superset of JavaScript called TypeScript, whereas components in Blazor once again are made up of HTML, CSS, and C Sharp. If we want to talk to JavaScript, maybe to consume a third party JavaScript library or to invoke a browser API, then we can do so using the JavaScript Introp APIs available in Blazor. Now let's understand why we need components with the help of an example. Let's say we want to build a simple web page that contains a button on the screen with the text show dialog and when we click on the button, we want to show a simple dialog. And when we click on the close button, the dialog should get closed. So how do we implement this without using any components or component based frameworks such as Angular or Blazor? Here I have a simple index.html file and inside the body element I have the HTML markup for the button and the dialog and inside the head element I have the CSS styles for the dialog. And towards the closing body element I have the JavaScript logic for showing or hiding the dialog. Also, we can move the CSS styles and the JavaScript logic into their own separate files if we want to. Now, what if we want to reuse this dialog in other places such as in other HTML documents? Then, we have to copy and paste at least the HTML markup for this dialog in other places. This leads to duplication. And when we want to change some aspect of the dialog, we need to update all the pages so that we ensure consistency across all the pages. So our code is now hard to maintain. Now what if we can somehow combine the HTML markup, the CSS styles and the logic for our dialog into a single unit called a component and give it a name say alert dialog then we'll be able to use that component name alert dialog as an HTML element wherever we want instead of having to copy and paste the entire HTML markup. And that's exactly what Blazor or Angular lets us do. Now let's see how we can go ahead and create a component in Blazor. Let's start Visual Studio. Click create a new project. From the list of project templates, choose the Blazor web app template and click next. Give the project a name, specify a location and click next. Set the interactive render mode to server and the interactivity location to global and click create. Now our project gets created and is visible in the solution explorer window. The convention is to put all of our components inside the folder called components. And some of those components may be pages. So we can put the page components inside the pages folder as we will see in just a bit. Right click the components folder and select add razor component and name the component alert dialog and click add. Now this razor component that we created is ultimately a C sharp class. We can demonstrate this by going to the project file. So double click on the project name in solution explorer and under property group specify emit compiler generated files and set the content to true. Now build the solution. Now in solution explorer, click the show all files button 
and expand the OBJ folder debug net 9.0 generated expand this one and expand this one and here you'll find the file that the compiler generated for the alert dialog component double click the file now scroll down and you'll find that alert dialog is actually a class that inherits from microsoft.aspinet core dot components dot component base let's close this file and click the show all files button in solution explorer once again to hide all the unnecessary files now a component in blazor is called a razor component because it uses a markup syntax called razor to combine html markup and c sharp code in the same file the default language of razor is html like the h3 element we have here and if we want to transition to c sharp code or razor specific markup we need to use the add symbol if the add symbol is followed by a razor reserved keyword it transitions into razor specific markup otherwise it transitions into c sharp code so here we have an add symbol that is followed by a razor reserved keyword called code so it transitions to razor specific markup here it simply creates a code block where i can add fields properties and methods to the component class let's remove the alert dialog text in the heading element and replace it with at heading text this heading text is not a razor reserved keyword so it transitions to c sharp code since heading text is not defined elsewhere as a c sharp field or property it gives a compile time error we can fix this by adding a c sharp field to the component class like so string heading text equals hello world now the at symbol will evaluate the expression heading text and it will output hello world as a heading when the component is rendered but how do we see that if the component has a page directive at the top like so at page slash dialog then it indicates that this is a routable component or a page component simply meaning that this component can be directly accessed via a url so this component can be put in the pages folder let's run the application and navigate to slash dialog and we can see the hello world heading but a dialog is not intended to be a routable component or a page component rather it should be used as a reusable component that can be used in other components and pages so let's remove the page directive here let's say we want to use the alert dialog component inside a parent component such as the home page we can simply use the name of the component as an html tag like so the home page itself as a page directive with a slash that points to the root of the application so if we run the application we see the level 3 heading with the hello world text here now let me go ahead and actually implement my alert dialog component let me paste the markup for the dialog like so so the ui content for the alert dialog component is done now how do we style the dialog where do we put the css styles for the dialog component we have two options we can either use global css or we can use scoped css global css works by putting the css styles in a special folder called the webroot folder which is www root here the preferred approach is to use scoped css so that's what we'll do next right click the components folder and select add new item and type alert dialog dot razor dot css and click add inside this file i'll paste in the css styles for the dialog now all that is left is to define our c sharp logic for showing or hiding the dialog so we can define a boolean c sharp field called is visible say bool is visible and set it to true for now up here we can put an at symbol followed by a razor reserved keyword called if so it transitions to razor specific markup here it simply indicates that we're using conditional rendering so we can pass an is visible and inside the code block 
we can put the entire markup for the dialog. So the dialog will only get rendered if is visible is set to true, which is what we have at this moment. If we go to the home component, we see that we have added our alert dialog component. So if we run the application, we can see our alert dialog displayed. Now there's a problem with our alert dialog component. And that is, it always displays the dialog no matter what. And if we want to hide the dialog, then we have to set is visible to false internally inside the component. Rather, it would be nice if we could somehow pass data indicating that we want to show or hide the dialog from our parent component, which is our home.razor, to the child component, which is our alertdialog.razor. This can be done using component parameters. To define a component parameter, we need to create a public property and decorate it with a parameter attribute. So let's get rid of the is visible field here and create a public property of type boolean called is visible and decorate it with the parameter attribute like so. Up here, we should change is visible to the one with uppercase i. Now, if we go to the home component, we can set the alert dialog components is visible parameter to true. So this data gets passed to the alert dialog component and it will be stored in the public property is visible that is decorated with a parameter attribute. And here inside the component, we are using the is visible property to conditionally render the dialog markup. If you run the application, the dialog will once again be visible. But if we set is visible to false and click on the hot reload button here, we can see that the dialog closes. Now, we want to show this dialog when a button is clicked. Let's say we have a button with the text show dialog. When this button is clicked, we want to set is visible to true and show the dialog. How will we do that? To do that, we need to use Blazor's event handling feature. In the opening tag of the button element, type at on and followed by that, we need to specify the DOM event that we want to handle. Since we want to handle the click DOM event, type click and set it to a method that we'll write in just a bit called show dialog. The on click thing that we just typed in is called a razor directive attribute. Now down below create an at code block and create a private method that returns void called show dialog. And inside that we would like to set a field called show dialog to true. Notice the lowercase yes in show dialog here and create a field called show dialog above. Now we want to pass the value of this show dialog field as a value for the is visible parameter. Now if we run the application and click on the show dialog button, we can see the dialog here. But if we click on the close button, we see that nothing happens. So let's go ahead and implement the close button functionality next. Now what we want is, if the alert dialog's close button is clicked, we want to let the parent component, which is our home.razor, to get notified so that it can then close the dialog by setting is visible to false. In other words, we need to pass information from the child component to the parent component. How do we do that? In the alert dialog component, we can define a public property of type even callback called onClose and decorate the property with a parameter attribute. Now we need to invoke the onClose event callback whenever the close button is clicked. So let's do just that. So in the opening tag of the close button, set at onClick equals onClose. Now go to home.razor and in alert dialog, we'll see that we have a parameter called onClose and set it to a method called close dialog that we'll create in just a bit. Now inside the code block, Create a private void method called close dialog and within it set show dialog to false. Now if we run the application and click show dialog, we see the dialog and if we click the close button, the dialog gets closed. Now what if we want to customize the dialog title and the dialog message? How will we do that? In the alert dialog component, we can define two parameters of type string called title and message and initialize them to some default values. Now up here in the markup, 
instead of hard coding the title and the message, we can render the component parameters like so. Now we can go to the home component and for the alert dialog component, we can set a custom title and a custom message by setting the title and message parameters. Now if we run the application and click on the show dialog button, we can see our dialog with our custom title and our custom message. Now in the alert dialog component, what if we want to customize the entire markup here? So we want to be able to set not only the title and the message, but we want to use a level 2 heading instead of the level 3 heading for the title. And we don't want a paragraph element for the message. How do we do that? This is done by using templated components. So down here, we can define a public property of type render fragment called child content and decorate it with the parameter attribute. And here, instead of this markup, we can render the child content like so. Now we can go to the parent component, which is our home.razor. Let's remove the title and message parameters since we are no longer using them. And instead of self-closing or alert dialog component, we can specify opening and closing tags. And in between them, we can paste our custom HTML markup. This will be set as the child content for our alert dialog component. So once again, if we run the application and click on the show dialog button, we can see the dialog with our custom HTML markup. So with this, we have come to the end of our video. In this video, we learned what Blazor components are, why we need them, and how we create and use them in our applications. Thanks for watching.